Welcome everyone. In this lesson, we will go into details about generics. We did a previous lesson about generics, traits and lifetimes, and now we will go one by one for these three specific topics. So today the topic is generics in Rust. Generics is a feature that many programming languages have, JavaScript <laughs> doesn't have it, to avoid code duplication. We will see an example soon. In this lesson we will see generics for functions, structs, enums, and methods for structs. We did specific lessons for all these parts, so for functions, for structs and methods, and enums. So in this case we will see how to use generics with these four features. And at the end, we'll also talk about performances when we are using generics. Here we can see two functions. One function basically gives the largest integer in a list. And here we can see another function that gives the largest char. What does it mean? In this case, like B is greater than A or Z is greater than X. They have a slightly different logic. So to have a largest integer and largest char, I need two functions. And here in the main function, we define a number list as a vector with a list of uh, numbers. In this case, they are integers 32. And then we get our result and then we print the result. And we have a vector of characters, y, m, a, q, and we return the largest character. Yes, you can see here, the largest number is 100, the largest char is y. And this code does work, nothing wrong with this code. What's the problem and what is something that we would like to have here? It would be nice to have a single function that can get integers or charts and return the largest no matter what is the type. Is uh, this uh, possible? Yes, it is. And now we will rewrite this uh, function using generics. Pay attention because, of course, here we want to focus on uh, the signature, the meaning, and so on. Refactor using generics. Here we can see this function. So this function is called now largest, angular brackets with uh, T. T stands for type. You can use any letter you want, but usually we use the T when it's only one. We get the reference to a list of this type and we return another reference. This ampersand stands for reference. We define this mutable variable here, largest, and then for all the items, if the item is greater than this largest, we define it into a new largest. So this is a basic logic. Let's try to run this code and let's see if we have some errors. Okay, we have a bunch of errors. One error is very easy to fix because we changed the name of the function. In this case, uh, I want to call this function largest for both the first one and the second one. Something interesting, if I try to run this again, let's read this uh, error. Binary operation greater sign cannot be applied to type ampersand t. The compiler is uh, very useful here because it's suggesting what I should do. To make it short, uh, I can't use uh, this greater sign because the logic of a greater sign might be associated with some specific uh, types. I need to add this trait, we will see traits in the upcoming lesson, here on line 38. In the definition, in this specific case, we do something like this. We use this trait for this type. Let's try again. Now we have the same behavior but using a single function. This is uh, mind-blowing. It's very useful. Instead of having these two functions, you can have a single one that can have a list of integer or a list of characters. We used this trait, partial ord, on this generic type. Let's see how we can use generics when we use structs. In this case, I want to use this point. Let's say that we want to define a point, but we want to leave the user free to choose between integers and floats. Can define this struct point with these angular brackets and this t, and then we have to coordinates. We'll use uh, 2D points here for simplicity. X of type T and Y of type 
t and then we can define a function main this example is okay but we will read it no worries so let's define three points integer float and char this is the name of the point the rust analyzer is very smart because it understands the type here we use the same construct here the point but you see the values inside this constructor they are different the first one are two integers the second one are two floats the third one are two characters maybe it might sound strange but uh, technically we can define a point based on characters let's try to print these three points cargo run and you can see here at the top we have integers 5 10 float 1 4 2 and character a b this worked i have one question if I try to mix these types, let's say that I want the user to be able to have uh, as a coordinate an integer and as a coordinate a float. Does it work out of the box? If I type let integer and float, I'm calling the constructor and I'm mixing. The first one is an integer, the second one is a float. If I try cargo run, no we get an error and let's understand first what is the error and second how and if we can fix it mismatched type expected integer found floating point number this is very important to understand the fact that we are using a t here on line 14 and 15 doesn't allow us to just use all the types we want this t is the same type it's not a wild card. It's a specific type that will be assigned at compile time. What is the solution? It's easier than what you might think. On line 13, I put t, comma, u. I can define multiple generic types, and here I can put as a y, u. Let's try this code again, and now it works. I can give as many generic types I want here in the struct definition and then use them as parameters. It's very important to understand because if we have only one type, we have just one T. Otherwise, we can have T U. The cool part is that the rest of the code still works. It's a bit an overkill, but if I have two different types, those type T and U, they are independent. I can have still two floats, two integers, two characters. I can have an integer and a float. I can have, for example, uh, let uh, integer and character. Let's print the last one here. You see, the last one is a point 5b. Does it make sense? For some games, it might even make sense. The important part to understand here is that I need to define multiple generic data types if I want to be more flexible. By default, we should use the minimum amount of data types as generics because maybe we intentionally want the three types to be the same. If we want to be flexible, we define T, U, V, W, all the letters you want. Otherwise, we use intentionally the same type because, for example, we want the type to match. Now, let's see. Methods for generics instructs. Methods are basically functions specific for a struct. Let's say that we want to have some methods specific for this struct. And here I want to get the x and the y values, some sort of getter. If you want a refresh, just check the lesson about methods for structs. I can do something like this. Line 19, we have this implementation for this struct point, and we have a couple of functions, which are the methods we want to implement. Okay, this is just an example, but it's just to showcase that we can use generics inside the methods of a struct. Let's try, for example, to read the x value of the integer char point. We read just the x. And then, for example, we want to read just the y of the float point, like this. Let's try. Cargo run. 5 and 4 dot 2. We can use, you see here, this t, u, in the definition of the methods for struct. This impl is to give methods for a specific struct. In this case, point tu. The fact that we are using struct doesn't mean that all the implementation should be with generics. For example, we can have a specific method for a specific type. 
in this case we can for example calculate the distance from origin for this uh, 2d point and you see here on line 31 we have this method distance from origin that is just for float number so in this case we can use this function only with floating point so this is very interesting because we can have specific functions just for this one we can try here to calculate the distance from origin p2 with 3 and 4 what's the distance here from origin let's see if you can calculate cargo run distance from origin is 5 we don't have to use generics only with the definition of the point but also we can define new generics inside the method of a struct let's say that we want to have a function that uses the x of a point and the y of another point mixer method we can have implementation of t and u of this point this is the method signature. We have a function mix up V and W, so two more generic data types, because basically we are getting the point and then another point, and then we are mixing them. We will give as an output the X of the first point and the Y of the second point. But to do this, I need to add more generic declarations inside this method definition. Let's try this with an example. We can have point one mix that has as x2 and as y10. And then we can have another point, the p2 underscore mix, that is also a float and has as an x5.0 and as a y, for example, 4 dot 3. Now let's try to mix them and we define a new point called p3 underscore mix and we get the p1 and as a parameter here the p2. What will be the output here? Let's see. Let's see, generics for enums. In this case, I will not make a specific example, of what, but I will use two enums that you should be confident in using if you, of course, if you have been following this course. So one is this one, the enum option. You should be familiar with this because this is how Rust handles null values. Rust doesn't have the null value, but it has option, which is an enum, and the option can be something, and none. Rust doesn't have null, but it has an enum called option that has the tip generic data type, and then it has two possible options. One is some t is the same generic type or the known option, and is known as no type. This is super important to understand in Rust, otherwise you'll get lost. This is how Rust uses generics for enums for the option to handle the null value. And now this should be easier to understand. We used the option multiple times, but we never get into the details of this T and this type. Another enum used in the Rust programming language is the enum result. The classical example for result is the HTTP request. Two options. One is the OK T. So for example, I receive the HTTP response. So type will be HTTP response. Or I can have an error. Maybe we don't know with exact type that error will be. It can be a string. It can be something more complex, a Postgres error, an error kind, an error about, I don't know, HTTP responses. In this case, the definition of this enum has two generic types. And now, reading these enums should be easier. We should be at least able to understand generics when we are reading the code. Let's see some examples. We can define some number or no number of type option i32, but this is some and this is known. This is complaining on line 27 and 28 because I need to add the trait debug on top here, derive debug, I think also below. This is to make possible to use this colon question mark here on line 29. And we can have also this success and failure and we use a match statement. If you don't know what a match statement is, we did multiple lessons about the match statement cargo run 
And you see here we have this output of sum5 known success in the first case and error in the second case. So it's a failure that returns this error. The last concept I want to talk about is performances of code using generics in Rust because someone might think that using generics is like an extra step and it might make our code slower. For example, here you can see on line 5 and 6 I define an integer as a sum 5 and a float as a sum 5.0. A very important concept to understand is that when Rust compiles the code, it does something called monomorphization. I love this word, this is can also be a nickname. During a monomorphization, the Rust compiler reads all the values and it turns them into the original types. This is why, for example, we got an error when we tried to generate a point with two different types and only one generic data type. The code that we will run will not have generics. Generics is a feature while you are coding. It's similar to TypeScript. It's something that is useful for us, but then the compiler will create all the necessary code. For example, in this case, the compiler will generate something similar to what you see on line 18 to 26. It's not exactly this because uh, the compiler uses different names, but uh, basically we'll have two enums, one for the i32 and one for the f64. We will have something like this that we can see here on line 30 and 31. The generic type T is basically replaced by the specific type used in the code. And good news, Using generics will not slow down your code. If I'm slowing down my code, in that case, I would probably prefer to have two functions. But no worries, you can use generics and your code will run just fine.